I'm going to be thinking for a few minutes about the man who was sick of the palsy in Matthew chapter 9. The Bible says that he, he was paralyzed. He could not even walk. And so his friends brought him to the Lord on a, on a gurney, on a stretcher, and lowered him down through the roof of the house so that they could get him to Christ. They believed that Christ was the only hope that this man had. And the Lord certainly did heal him that day. And what a blessing that he was able to take up his bed and walk. And I think it's interesting in the text in Matthew chapter 9, the Bible says Christ's response to him was when he saw the faith, their faith, he said to the sick of the palsy, son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. And behold, certain of the scribes said within themselves, this man blasphemeth. And Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? For whether it is easier to say thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and walk. And it really amounts to the same thing. Only God has the power to do either one of those things, to heal or to forgive sins. And so the Lord challenged these people and said, Okay, you say I'm blaspheming, but which is easier to do to heal a man of his sickness so that he who has never walked or has at least walked for many, many years um, and heal him or to say his sins are forgiven. Only God can do either one of those things. And I think it's amazing here that the Lord just was so quick to demonstrate his divine power and showed a lot of things. He showed, first of all, compassion on those who had a need and Jesus Christ is compassionate. The Bible says, he said himself, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come unto me, ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. And if you need rest in your soul today, friend, go to the Lord. If you're troubled, if you're distressed, if you're worried, if you're weighted down about various life issues, submit those to the Lord. And he is compassionate to deal with them even as he was compassionate to deal with these people who had awful diseases and to raise them up and to heal them. But at the same time, he wants to heal the soul and he's able to forgive sins and would say to the person who needs his help, actually the most important need that we have is a spiritual need. And he would say, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Come to the Lord and submit to him and be what he would have you to be and yield to him, submit to the surrender to the Lord's will for your life. And you can experience the peace and joy of forgiveness of sins. What a great person he is. God, the son, I think it's interesting. The Bible calls him the word. John one says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 says, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And actually, the, the term word implies the expression of a thought. That's what a word is. And Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily, according to Colossians chapter 2. And he manifested deity to us in human form. Somebody asked the question, what would God do if he were a man? Well, Jesus Christ is the manifestation of the answer to that question. And what a blessing that we have this biblical example of how God would act if he were us. And we, of course, cannot be exactly like him, but he wants us to emulate his qualities. And we see in this Matthew 9 text, we see the compassion of Christ we see the reasonableness of Christ. He knew who he was in God's plan. And this man who was sick of the palsy probably didn't think very much of himself, but the Lord cared about him as well and sought to help him and reached out to him and said, Son, be of good cheer. May God give you peace today. He cares about you and he wants to be a help and a blessing to you. God bless you.